This week in the Wheel of Time news, we have got some huge information that bodes very well for the future of the Wheel of Time as a series. We're going to talk about the reports on ratings for Season 1 of the Wheel of Time, some new filming locations for Season 2 that may hint at a very major location fans will want to know about, some unexpected actors back in Prague for filming, and some news for Maureen actress Rosamund Pike. And lastly, did the Wheel of Time get picked up for a third season? We're going to dive into all of this and more on this week's weekly Wheel of Time news. So today's video will carry a spoiler rating of yellow. There will be no major spoilers at all for either the books or the show, but I will mention some locations and characters and some vague references to their actions in season one and in the books. You should be fine to watch this video regardless of where you are in the series, but if you want nothing at all to be spoiled, watch at your own risk. So let's go ahead and kick off the news with some possible filming locations for season two of The Wheel of Time. This particular filming location is being labeled as a major landmark from The Wheel of Time. Silver Screen Tours has updated their website to include what they are calling the Royal Palace of Andor, which is in the city of Camelon. The location in question is a palace called Plaskovis Castle. Now, Plaskovis Castle is a castle in the Czech city by the same name, and it's really beautiful. It was once the home of Anna Maria of Tuscany and Gaston III, not from Beauty and the Beast, but the last member of the Italian Medici family. Now, as you may see by these pictures, the palace is beautiful and could certainly be used for the royal palace. But first, what is Silver Screen Tours? Well, Silver Screen Tours is a travel and tour group that lets customers take tours of famous sites that were used for filming in television shows and movies. For example, they have tours of Hobbiton, the Game of Thrones tours. You can go see the places they filmed and the like. They have a Wheel of Time section, and this news is centered around the fact that they added this location recently to their list of locations for their tour, and it says the Royal Palace of Andor. So this is clearly the Royal Palace for sure then, right? Not so fast. I have a couple of reasons for being skeptical of this. First of all, the most important reason, Wheel of Time super sleuth and secret CIA intelligence officer Geeky Eerie pointed out on her Twitter that this palace was actually used in season one for a cutscene, as well as Silver Screen is basing their information here on pre-release speculation. As Geeky Eerie points out, this does not mean that it won't be used for Cayman, just that we should not be using Silver Screen Tours as a reason for making that statement. I have another reason I don't believe this will be used for Camelon, and it's pretty simple. They could have used it maybe as an exterior shot, but the interiors will most certainly not be used as the location for the Royal Palace in Andor. They would not choose a very busy public location that they'd have to pay for to shut it down to shoot in for a set that's going to be used pretty much for the entire run of the show. Locations and sets like this are the reason they built Jordan Studios. I would be shocked if the palace interiors are not just simply built on a soundstage and used repeatedly. This would be the same way that the sets in Tarvalon were used, like the Hall of the Tower, but they're going to do the same things with various rooms on the Royal Palace in Andor. In any case, I would not be the slightest bit shocked to see Camelon and the Royal Palace appear in Season 2, given what we assume will be happening with some of the casting for Season 2, but I would not take the, the fact that this is definitely Camelon at face value. As I reported in my video a few weeks back covering all of the things that we know so far about Season 2 of The Wheel of Time, there were a few characters from Season 1 of the show that we were not sure yet if they would be making appearances in Season 2 of The Wheel of Time. One such character was Loghain, played by Alvaro Morte. Based on the scenes we got from his character in Season 1, it was unclear if we'd see him back in Season 2. Now on February 1st, a picture was posted on Instagram, not by Alvaro himself, but of him at a restaurant in Prague. The caption was, it was great to have you here, Professor, which is a reference to Alvaro's most famous role as the professor on the Netflix series Money Heist. Now, this certainly seems to imply that Alvaro is back in Prague for season two of the filming. I would not imagine that he would have a large role in the season, as this season appears to be adapting books two and three of the series, books in which Loghain does not make much more than a cameo appearance. Regardless, I'm glad he will be back, even if it is only for cameos, as I really love Loghain as a character, and I want to see more of him. Alvaro was wonderful as Loghain in season one, so anytime we're going to get him back on the show, I'm going to be happy to see him. It also makes me more confident that he will have a much expanded role in the future, as they are bringing him back just to keep his character in viewers' minds. Now, Rosamund Pike, the world-famous actress that plays Moraine in The Wheel of Time, has a new announced project, a movie called Rich Flu, a feature film directed by Spanish director Galder Gastela Aritia. I probably horribly butchered that name. I am so sorry. 
The movie is about a type of flu that targets the wealthiest people in society and works its way down from the richest to the less rich. The concept of the movie is kind of cool, and just having stuff and assets becomes, well, I guess the opposite of desirable. Obviously, they're making some sort of a statement here, but the plot synopsis seems interesting. Now, Rosamund is set to play the lead in the film, so this is certainly far more than a cameo or a supporting role. And even though she was an Oscar-nominated actress, Rosamund's star has been rising lately, with award-winning performances in I Care A Lot and Radioactive, and obviously in addition to her parts here on The Wheel of Time. So how does this affect her time with The Wheel of Time? Is this role going to prevent her from filming in the show, or is Moraine being written off? I don't think so. Principal photography is set for Rich Flu to begin in fall of 2022. For movies like this, principal photography typically takes one to two months, although sometimes it can run over. Now, Wheel of Time has typically started filming around the same time, but they could be changing that cadence, or Moraine by that point might have a much smaller role in the show, or they just might be moving around her filming schedule, which is kind of true in the books anyway with her having a smaller role. I've seen some speculating that this might mean season three of the show might not happen, which is untrue. It's been rumored already to have been picked up for a third season, and I think based on the news that we'll get to here in a bit, I think that may become a little bit more obvious. Now, to me, this is par for the course in working with a high-profile actor, and nothing here to be worried about. Now, before we get to the big news, let me thank the video sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN is the number one provider of VPN services in the world. Now, what is a VPN, Nablus? A VPN acts as an intermediary between you and your internet service provider. They create an encrypted browsing experience by routing all of the traffic through their encrypted sites, it basically prevents your internet service provider from tracking your internet movements, what you're doing, what you're typing, or other nefarious entities from invading your privacy. A VPN makes your browsing completely safe. There's a no logging feature that means none of what you're doing online could ever be sold to anyone. Additionally, one of the major features of a VPN is the ability to make it appear as though you are anywhere else in the world. So you can access Netflix in Japan or Europe, even if you live in the US. VPNs are a must have if you use the internet regularly. And normally they're already very cheap, but because you're one of my viewers, you're going to get access to NordVPN for even cheaper. Just click the link in the description of this video to get a massive discount on the already cheap NordVPN service and protect your internet browsing today. All right, let's get back to the news. This past week, some major news came out about The Wheel of Time's first season and just how successful it was. We already knew that for its release, it was very popular and it broke a number of Amazon's records for watch through rate, which is the rate that viewers watch an episode from start to finish. For the first three episodes of the show, Wheel of Time was the most popular show in Amazon history and it broke a number of their records. What we did not know was the data for the rest of the series. And now we do. Wheel of Time was the number one most watched television show across all streaming platforms in 2022. That is actually remarkable if you compare the shows it beat out, and it's a very, very good sign for the future of the show. Now, the Wheel of Time, according to Parrot Analytics, who measures audience demand, engagement, overall popularity of the series across streaming platforms, said that it was 43.2 times more in demand in the first 30 days than the average television show released in the United States. Which put into other words, it was really damn popular. The Wheel of Time beat out massively popular shows like Arcane, Hawkeye, WandaVision, Loki, Falcon and Winter Soldier, Squid Game, Chucky, Shadow and Bone. That is really quite remarkable, and as I mentioned, it bodes very well for the future of the show. At this point, it would be shocking for a third season to not be greenlit, but it's probably safe to say that it already has, just not officially confirmed, but more on that in a moment. Now, especially with Amazon releasing Lord of the Rings this year as well, that's hopefully going to draw in the same type of buzz, and that will be a great lead-in for Wheel of Time Season 2. Because Wheel of Time was the number one new show, next year we'll find out how it compares to every other show that's not new. Now, regardless of how many felt about the last episode, the data shows the show was extremely popular, and many non-book readers appeared to have loved the show. I used to be able to say that people I knew that had not read the books just loved it. That was anecdotal. That was from me. But now it seems that that's confirmed by data. Now, this next piece of news is hot off the presses, and it appears to confirm that season three of The Wheel of Time has been picked up, although not officially announced from Amazon. Deadline announced in an article of all things, the crime drama Criminal Minds, in on which Daniel Henney played a major character for years, 
That show is being revived on Paramount Plus, which is a CBS streaming service. And the article listed out the main cast that would be returning for that revival. Now, in the blurb, there was mention of Daniel Henney not being fully committed and only being able to cameo basically because of his role in the real time. The article then went on to say that the show had been picked up for two more seasons, implying season two, which we knew, and seemingly confirming season three, which had been speculated to have been picked up. Now, while this is not official confirmation, I do think it adds more fuel to the fire that the show has already been picked up for season three. They are not likely to announce this until we get closer to season two's release, but I think it makes sense given the extremely positive ratings data that has come out recently. Things are looking very positive for the show going forward, and hopefully Amazon continues to up the budget and the scope as the seasons progress. Now, before getting to the announcement of yet another Wheel of Time convention, I'm sorry to have to say I have to play another commercial for you all. This one is very, very important, and you would not want to miss a second of it. Let me play this for you, and then we'll chat about it in a moment. Are you someone who hates the Wheel of Time TV show with every part of your being? Do you spend all of your waking moments thinking about how you can get vengeance on those that made a TV show you didn't like? If so, you know how much trouble it can be to constantly be seeking out all of the places people talk about the Wheel of Time TV show on the internet and make shitty comments. You have to spend so much time looking for places to spew your shitty comments that you can't actually think about how god awful and terrible the show was. What a drag. Introducing the White Cloak Comment Bot. The White Cloak Comment Bot uses a patented algorithm to find and comment automatically in every place on the internet at once even the places no one fucking asked you. Here's how it works. The bot will create a procedurally generated comment that has randomized answers, so every comment you make will be the same, but different. For example, the bot will start each comment with a randomized number of the word whoa. Then it will select a random number between 10 and 76 years that you have been reading the books to establish your credibility, followed by a randomized word choice on why you think the show is woke. Choices are cast is too dark, gay agenda, men, bad women, good, and of course, liberal commie bullshit. Lastly, it will choose a random person associated with the production that you can blame for shitting all over Robert Jordan's legacy. The bot will also automatically detect if the content creator that posted something said even one positive thing about the show and will make sure to let them know they are a sellout shill. Check out these examples. Woke, woke. As a book fan who's been reading the books for 44 years, this piece of shit is just another example of the gay agenda gone rampant. I blame Harriet for shitting all over Robert Jordan's legacy. He is rolling around in his grave. When did you sell out, you fucking shill? Enjoy the gravy train while it lasts. Woke, 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 woke. As a book fan who's been reading the books for 59 years, this piece of shit show is just another example of liberal commie bullshit gone rampant. I blame Hillary Clinton for shitting all over Robert Jordan's legacy. He is rolling around in his grave. The White Cloak Comment Bot. Because who has time to be an absolute horrible person without help from technology? So as I said, there are many out there who really, really need the ability to get that bot, especially now that season two is coming. It's a lot of work to hate, and so you do need some help from technology. All joking aside, that is a snippet from my podcast, Harvalon After Dark. If you were not aware, I'm one of the hosts of a podcast. It's sort of like a half comedy podcast, as you can see, and then a half deep dive and discussion of the books, the show, all of that. If you are not a podcast person, which I wasn't before, or you've just never tried podcasting, I would suggest giving this podcast a shot. It's definitely a different format. I think it's a lot of fun. It's entertaining. You can find Tarvalon After Dark anywhere you get your podcasts. Go check it out. All right, now let's really get back to the news again. So in community news, we have got yet another new Wheel of Time convention, and that is very exciting. 
So Jordan Khan has been a staple of the Wheel of Time fandom for like the last 10 years or so. But with the popularity of the show, new conventions have been springing up. First, it was SpoilerCon a few years ago, led by the folks at Watt Spoilers. Then, this year, we have the inaugural WattCon, which is going to be a massive Wheel of Time only convention in Columbus, Ohio this summer from July 8th to the 10th. Now, I'm one of the folks planning WattCon, and obviously, we're very excited for what's coming there. Tickets are filling up fast, so if you want more information on that, head to wattcon.com and you can check out all of it. But that's not the new con I'm talking about. For all this time, these Wheel of Time conventions have been in the U.S. The massive following of Wheel of Time fans in Europe have had to travel across the Atlantic. No longer. Valkyrie Con is a Wheel of Time convention in Europe. It's going to be in Manchester, UK on September 10th through the 11th. Now, they don't have a website up yet, but they are asking for donations to get started. And I can speak to that in saying that starting a convention is very expensive. I will have their GoFundMe linked in the description of this video if you want to support Valkyrie Con. Additionally, Rob from Malkir Talks, the person who's running the convention, will be my guest on this week's Monday live show. I personally will be in attendance at Jordan Con and obviously at WattCon, but I'm going to try to be out and be in attendance at Malkiri Con as well. I love excuses to travel, and I definitely want to go back to the UK. So hopefully I will see some of you there. So let's hit last week's contest. To refresh your memory, last week's contest was to join the Tarvalon After Dark Discord server and let me know that you came from the video. Well, that Discord blew up and I was blown away by your responses. But let's announce last week's winner, who is going to get a choice of any t-shirt they want from shopwheelofTime.com. Last week's winner was CaspianX67. Message me on Discord so I can get the details to get that shipped out to you. Now, let's talk about this week's contest. First of all, as many of you are aware, I have a regular live show every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time here on YouTube. I've got special guests. I wear wigs when people give me money. We do a whole lot of talking about the Wheel of Time. It's a good time. If you aren't watching the live show, it happens every single Monday, again, at 9 p.m., so make sure to mark your calendars. But it occurred to me that we need a better name for that live show rather than just calling it the live show. So, this week's contest is simple. First of all, as always, you must be subscribed to the channel and like the video. But then, I want you to leave your most creative name for the Monday live show in the comments of the video. The only specifications I have is that it needs to be Wheel of Time focused in some way. It needs to fit the Nablus brand, aka Death and Destruction, obviously. Well, okay, maybe not that, but something that ties in with the channel in some way. I'm really excited to see what you all come up with. So again, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and then leave me an idea in the comments about what you would call the Monday Live Show. I'll pick a winner next week, and the winner will get a $25 gift card to shopwheeloftime.com. Thank you all for watching, and special thank you to my patrons who are on the screen right now. You make all of this possible, and the new writers that will be starting soon on thegreatflight.com are going to be paid through your generosity. The goal is to make more Wheel of Time content for the fandom and help spread love for the series, and you all help make that possible. If you want to support the channel and our goals here, please consider becoming a patron of the channel. You can find that link in the description of the video. Also, check out one of these videos here that you might like. YouTube does not always share videos with you that you would like, so check these ones out. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, peace out.